I get to the ditch, right? I'm laying in the ditch and bye, they just left. <laughs> they were like, peace. <laughs> of it got done with work early and I figured since I've tried 37 times to record this one video that everybody keeps asking me about I would do it today while I was going for a cruise I did a poll on my Instagram stories um, a while ago asking what you guys wanted to see in my next vlog and a lot of people said that they wanted to hear how I get into riding and what made me want to ride. I actually get asked this question a lot. Oh my God, so like so many people have asked me about my makeup routine. So I decided to do this tutorial for you guys. <laughs> Meanwhile, like nobody really asked. <laughs> that's what I always think of when I go to say something like that. <laughs> like I feel like one of those people that say, oh my god, I've get asked this question so many times and meanwhile they don't. <laughs> like, just say I felt like talking about this. <laughs> but anyway, I actually honestly get this question a lot. How I got into riding, what made me start riding, kind of the whole backstory. So, I figure let's Let's try this for the fifth time. Every time I do it, <laughs> it ends up the, the audio was cut off or I meet Shade Tree <laughs> or Batman. But America. Whew. But man, it's like, I don't know, lower 50s today here which is crazy because it's November. It's the end of November. It's almost Thanksgiving. Woohoo! Man, it's windy. I am going to be trying the next size up windshield pretty soon here. So that's going to help get rid of this wind noise as well. I've been riding, well, let me start with this. I've had my license for 10 years. Woohoo! Woohoo! Oh my gosh! the wind man holy crap <laughs> oh jeez <laughs> so let's see about 10 years ago 2010 uh my ex-husband <laughs> and i <laughs> were we had just moved back into my parents' house because our lease was up in our apartment and we were going through the process of buying a house and we couldn't, you know, and, you know, we only had, I don't know, a few months to get through the process, close on the house, all that stuff. So we didn't really have the option to sign another one-year lease. So we moved in with my parents for a couple months. Uh, in that time, he decided to buy this little crap box. I think, I, I honestly don't remember what it was. I think it was like a Honda 250 or so. I don't even know what it was. It was the tiniest, crappiest little bike, but it ran, so it was amazing. <laughs> so neither one of us had our license and, uh, you know, he brought it home and he started just putzing it around the neighborhood and you know obviously I was like oh I want to <laughs> so I started taking it around and me like mind you it wasn't like <laughs> the best writing it was a cul-de-sac that was very short pretty steep hill nothing crazy and that was it so you know I would take it around the cul-de-sac and that was pretty much it not really good for practicing but let me tell you the backstory of why it was <laughs> fine for me at that point 
like 10 years ago, I was like 25-ish, and I had never learned to drive a manual transmission at that point. So, you know, the whole deal when I was growing up was I could, you know, pick my, I bought my own car and I could pick what I wanted, obviously, because I was buying it, but it had to be automatic. Um, just in case there was an emergency and my mom needed to drive it or, you know, somebody's car was down, she couldn't drive a stick, so, and that was totally fine because, you know, whatever. I didn't care. I just wanted to drive. <laughs> so, you know, then a few years later, my ex-husband, then boyfriend, he, he got a old, I don't remember what year it was, it was a Mustang and it was, it was a stick and he tried to teach me and this is how it went. He was in the seat, my father was in the car as well. <laughs> I, <laughs> we took it on a side road, straight road, <laughs> and I was driving and I was getting used to it. Like I'm so, I'm the type of person that like, <laughs> I'm very methodical about something. I'm very like numbers oriented, like this is how you do it, by the book kind of a kind of a deal. Give me the instructions and I'll do it 30 times the same way. And, you know, it, it didn't come natural to me to be shifting and using the clutch. It, it was gonna take me some practice, but anyway, so my father and my ex-husband were both in the car and I was just trying to understand how to know when to shift up and down like do you hit a certain RPM like like I said very like methodical like numbers oriented like if you have to shift at this RPM I'm gonna shift but the concept was was hard for me <laughs> So here we are, and I'm trying to figure out how this works, and I got one of them yelling clutch in my ear, and I got the other one yelling in my other ear, brake. And <laughs> they're both yelling opposite things. So I was, I didn't get very far, and I was like, no, I'm done. <laughs> and, and that was it. Uh, I just, I was like, I can't do this with both of you telling me exact opposite things. <laughs> so, that was that and I never learned until I became a line woman many years later so I started working at the power company as uh, a line woman and you had to have your CDL so you could drive the bucket trucks and pull trailers and and pull big machines so you needed your CDL class A so here I am I have to get my CDL on a giant bucket truck and I have no idea how to even drive it so you know the guys tr you know tried to teach me how to drive it on the job but then we got sent to school like once a week to drive semis and that school taught you how to get your CDL I got a class A CDL license <laughs> I could drive tractor trailers and pretty much anything I got I could drive anything according to my CDL. I don't know if I would. Damn, who was honking? Who the hell? I went from not being able to drive a manual transmission car to driving a tractor trailer. <laughs> So anyway, back to my story. So it was tough for me to figure it out. Now, my parents' driveway was a 90 degree hill, uphill both ways. And so every time I tried to bring it back up the driveway, I couldn't do it. I would stall on the hill. And I don't think I ever dropped it, but like somebody always had to be there to to take over and bring the bike up the driveway. <laughs> so that that was rough, it was a little tough. Um, but, uh, but anyway, so we decided to both take the motorcycle safety course. And uh, I don't know if it's the same in every state, but once you take that, it's a two day course, which 
I would highly, highly recommend, especially if you don't really have anybody to teach you, that's gonna teach you like the right way to ride, the basic, like, you know, it, it gives you a basic understanding of what to do. And you obviously have to just keep practicing your skills and, and work on them. It's not like you're a professional rider uh, by the end of the class. But uh, you take it, two day class, great class. And then you, if you pass, you get a little certificate and you take it to the DMV. And uh, oh God, something smells so good. And you have your license. You don't have to take the test, the road test. So that was a big plus for me. I get very, like I get test anxiety really, really bad. And I didn't even want to think about taking a test. So to be able to do that was mint. So we took the class. The instructor kept asking me like, how long have you been riding? And I'm like, uh, never. <laughs> and he didn't believe me. So like whenever I start something, I will go balls to the wall. Like I'll have no fear. And I don't know, like a little fear is always healthy. I feel like, like when I became a line woman and I started, you know, you're climbing poles and you just have, I know I always go back to this for an example, but it's what I know. We're gonna get a spot in the sun here. She looks so good. So I think some level of fear is healthy because it just keeps you a little grounded, you know? Or respect even. I don't know if so much fear, but respect. You know, I was working on high voltage power lines and you know, you can't so much be scared, but you have to have some respect for what you're doing. So I was having a blast, man. And, you know, I was bobbing and weaving in and out of cones. And I was like, yeah, like I'm doing so good. So, passed the test. Coincidentally, we passed by a Kawasaki dealer to and from the safety course every day for the weekend. Now I knew I wanted a bike for two very strong reasons. One, which should have been a clear foreshadowing of the future for me. <laughs> uh, number one reason I wanted my own bike, I did not trust my ex-husband whatsoever. I did not want to get on the back of a bike with him. Zero, zero, zero percent wanted to get on the back of a bike with him. No thank you. <laughs> and two, hell yeah, I wanted my own bike. <laughs> so went into the dealer. And I fell in love with a Ninja 500 R. I it was a 2009. I believe it was the last year that they made the 500s. Um, at least if I remember correctly. You know, I couldn't bring it home. I didn't even have my license. <laughs> so I went to the DMV, got my license, and went back to pick up my bike. Got myself a new helmet, new jacket, shiny new gloves. I was the man. I rode this thing home. It was like oh, maybe like an hour ride home from there. And meanwhile, I had never, like the only practice I had was on that, you know, around the block at my parents' house. And and at the course for not even two days because half of it was a written portion. So, dude, I had no business bringing that thing home. <laughs> I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do and you're gonna have to learn eventually, but, um, you know, I brought it on some busy ass roads and highways and over the bridge and over the river and through the woods <laughs> to grandma's house we go. Man, this cold air just destroyed my voice. I feel like I just went through puberty. Anywho, <laughs> so five minutes before I'm home, I'm on the highway, scan a lot, you know, traffic's building up, 
and you know I didn't live here I wasn't in the boonies back then I was in civilization so <laughs> the traffic was building up and I'm like you know what let me just get off this main road and you know take a side road home I could have picked any side road to get home they all connected I chose the sharpest switchback turn you could ever take in your entire life <laughs> so put on my blinker go to turn have a little oh shit, this is sharper than I thought what am I doing I don't know what the hell I'm doing uh, gravel down I go slid straight down the road across the other lane into the ditch now <laughs> one thing I'll never forget was the car that I slid in front of it was a white Mercedes thank God they stopped I can't hate on them they stopped and didn't run me over thank you uh, <laughs> but I get to the ditch right I'm laying in the ditch and bye they just left <laughs> they were like peace they, they didn't even like okay not everybody's gonna stop and help somebody but like <laughs> I just slid in a ditch in front of you and you just keep driving like okay well thank you for not running me over I guess I was like what <laughs> thank god my ex-husband uh, was behind me and he was able to pick the bike up for me out of the ditch because I had no clue so um, and I didn't like I was very lucky I can laugh about it you know because I was stupid and I'll admit it um I didn't even break a nail <laughs> there are a couple scratches on like the handlebars and the exhaust on the ninja but other than that it wasn't bad at all her ego I never once got to ride with my ex like at that point he had ripped the bike apart because there was so much crap wrong with it and he never got it back together it was just in shambles apart and the garage and I don't know if he ever got it I think he sold it to somebody as like a parts bike I don't even remember <laughs> I try to forget that part of my life actually so I kind of like I didn't have anybody else to ride with and then after that like we split and you know I would ride it back and forth to work a lot but I got sent all kinds of places for work. I was never in one spot. A lot of times it was like an hour and a half away on the highway and I just wasn't into it. I didn't really get a chance to hone in my skills and practice more and get comfortable. So yeah, I met Anthony and I still had my bike and I was like, yeah, I got a motorcycle and trying to act all cool, but like I barely rode it. Um, you know, so I just rode on the back of his bikes and we had a great time and it was fun and we took a lot of trips and we went to all the bike weeks, Florida. I finally got to the point, it was like, you know what? I'm not riding this thing. It's just sitting here. Let me just sell it. I sold it and <laughs> it's such a great story. Like, I'm so glad that it went to who it did. It ended up being this girl that she told me the story that <laughs> She had just broken up or her and her boyfriend had just broken up and it sounded like it wasn't a good breakup I don't know what the details were it was a revenge bike that she was buying <laughs> so she got her license and she was getting herself a bike and she was gonna show him and good for her man so <laughs> I don't know what happened but she had that bike for a while I saw it around town for years I don't I haven't seen it in a while I don't know if she still has it or she moved but then Anthony got this bagger and it was just it was getting uncomfortable riding in the back and not only that I was getting the itch again I wanted my own bike what are you doing hello what are you doing so we talked about it and I started looking and you know I obviously wasn't super comfortable I wasn't seasoned because I hadn't been riding so I thought that I needed you know I, I was looking up bikes for short riders and 
you know, kind of like entry level bikes again. I wasn't into the whole sport bike thing again. I don't know if it was like trauma, <laughs> uh, which it really wasn't that bad. Doing some searches online and I see the Iron 883 and it was blacked out and I was like, yup, that's for me. And it's just kind of history from there. The biggest piece of advice I could say is just do it. If you want to do it, just do it. Take the safety course. They have the motorcycles there. They have beginner bikes. And I know you could do it at Harley. Uh, community colleges usually have them. Just look them up. Uh, and then just try it and see, get the feel for it. You drive around in a parking lot. And once you get your license, it's just like anything else. You need to practice. If you just putts around here and there once in a great while. There's those people out there that are good at everything they do, <laughs> but you just gotta practice to get comfortable. It wasn't the fact that I was riding again, then it was the whole situation of being out by myself. Like, I always had that safety net of, you know, riding with Anthony in case anything happened, he would be there. And it took me a while to even go out by myself. And then once I went out by myself, you know, and I have to say, watching these moto vloggers go out and ride themselves and talk about their experiences, 100% helped me. So I only hope that I can do the same for somebody because I said, you know what, what the hell am I doing being so scared for? Look at this freedom. The things that went through my head would be, what if I, what if I have to stop on a hill and, you know, Anthony's not there with me to make sure that I start, you know, I don't stall on the hill or, you know, what if, what if I drop my bike? You know what? What if I drop my bike and pick it back up and I keep going? You know what I mean? So it's just, who cares? Fear is just going to keep holding you back and you're never going to achieve anything if you let fear take over you. And you know, it's something that I struggle with every day for all kinds of things. Everybody struggles with it. You just have to push past your comfort zone and you just gotta do it. And then once you do it and keep doing it and you do it more and you practice, then it becomes old hat. When you only ride once in a great while, that, that uncomfortable feeling and that unease and that, you know, is this turn gonna be too tight? Or those, those feelings that you get one, you know, just, there's a million things that run through your head and it's one, it's nerve wracking to ride like that all the time if you never get comfortable. You wanna enjoy riding. You don't wanna be scared every time you go for a ride. You wanna enjoy it. So just do it. Practice, get out there and just do it. Just. Do it! Don't let your dreams be dreams. Yesterday you said tomorrow. So just do it! Make your dreams come true! Just do it! I do not even claim to be a great rider either. Like, I do not have those, you know, police officer tight turn skills or any of that. So, uh -huh. I'm going the right way on this road now. Check this out. I think this this might have been in my quad lock video. Check this out, man. Check this out. Like, can you beat that? Nope. Can't beat it. That's my advice. Just try it. And ride your own ride. You know, that's another thing too that I think a lot of people get stuck on is trying to keep up with people that either aren't at their skill level or just aren't at their comfort level. And people get into trouble trying to keep up with others. If it has to be, you ride up and down the block, you know, every day, or, you know, and you just go a driveway further every day, you know, it doesn't matter. You're still making progress. So, <laughs> There's my story. I feel like I should have made something up like, yeah, I was riding and this big grizzly bear came out and attacked me. And then a lion came and ate my motorcycle. 
and then a giant bald eagle came and plucked me up and saved me and dropped me back. But no, nothing like that, unfortunately. <laughs> so guys, we'll end it here. Make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon so you're notified every time I put something new out. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this. And until next time, guys, you ride safe, and I'll catch you on the next one. <laughs>